So let's just get started. Welcome, welcome to the second full moon meditation in October. And this happens uh, very few times that you have a full moon twice in a month. And what a beautiful way to start and end October. We started with a full moon and we're ending with a full moon. And like we know in different parts of the world, the full moon uh, and the timings of it, it was between yesterday, late night and our early morning and today across the world. And similarly, when we started, it was between October 1st and 2nd across different parts of the world. We also had a lunar eclipse yesterday. Uh, it was visible from some parts of Asia and Australia and um, I think Africa as well. And if uh, we know that lunar eclipse is, what does it signify? It really signifies the breaking of old patterns and letting go of the old habits, letting go of the old thought processes and letting go of anything that, that is old and not serving us. Now, I want you to just pay attention to the word old. Now, it does not necessarily mean in terms of of course, the time, because time, as I have been saying more often now, is a man-made thing. Uh, and I'm, when the time is right, I'm going to talk about what that uh, means, time is a man-made thing, and how we can actually bend time. So I am waiting eagerly for the right moment to talk about that and share uh, that with you and how I have been able to, uh, and like many others actually, many of us are doing this now across the world, how we are able to bend time or fasten time uh, when we need to. And uh, that doesn't happen because personally you have a stake, but it happens when there is an altruistic or there is a larger reason for us to do that. So that's for another topic. Coming back to the lunar eclipse. So lunar eclipse, when we say it is a time of shedding old belief systems or sh shedding the something that is no longer serving us. If you notice the last couple of months, this year particularly, we have, we've had a lot of uh, special dates. You know, we had uh, the 0404 portal, which was in April. Uh, we have another, some people are also saying there's another one on 1111. Uh, but personally, uh, I, I felt that 0404 was definitely one of them uh, from the end end of March when uh, the lockdown was happening in most of the countries along across the world it was actually a very potent time and it's not surprising that the planets aligned in such a way that it was also lockdown and it was for a very 
a global reason. It was not a single country, it was not a single continent, but really countries across the world and the entire earth being affected by it. And so in April, we had a portal. We also had, and through April to May, it was a very uh, extremely important time. And recently, if you would have seen my meditation on the Shera, which is celebrated in India, or on 25th of October, 25th of October was again a very, very special time. Uh, and if you haven't watched it, I would urge you that you do the meditation, even if you uh, cannot do the specific things that were only for that particular day, that's okay. But definitely do, do the meditation also, because it will still have those effects that, um, or it will still be potent for you and useful for you because that's the intention that I have, I had set in that particular meditation. It is available over here on my page. I will also link it in the comments when I upload this meditation for today. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about as also mentioned is uh, we also have another major uh, change and major event that is happening in December. And I will be doing a half and half a day or perhaps at least four hours, three or four hours of a special program uh, in December towards the third week of December. I will share the date, but watch out for that time. I am uh, really trying to see if I can be in a, uh, in a, in a place uh, where I can do it outside. And there is also a good internet connection where I can really harness the best of the energies to when I'm broadcasting it to all of you so that I can also share those even if it's though through video I can share that with you so watch out for that uh, special event that is going to happen in the third week of December. So lunar eclipse if this is the time that some of you have been feeling uh, what do you need to do? What is it? Uh, you know, many of the many people that I have been in touch with over the last few weeks, people have had come, you know, it's come back, the haphazard sleeping pattern has come back, or uh, some people have been able to overcome that sleeping pattern. Now understand that tr that transition or transcendence is different for each person. Uh, we can learn from other pe people's experiences, but we cannot compare the experiences because each person has their own journey, each person's understanding and each person's capacity will be different. And it's not about somebody's more or less, it, it will just be different. So this year, if anything has taught us that there is, you know, Earth is really a level playing field. There is no one who is superior and there is no one who is lesser or inferior because the lockdown was equal for everybody. Everybody was at home unless they were part of essential services. And so this year when I talk about, you know, if you have been feeling that now the full moon energy combined with lunar eclipse is, <coughs> is quite intense this time. And I know that you probably heard me uh, say this word a number of times in tense because this, this year, uh, that is, this entire year has been intense and it is at the same time, it is a glorious year for us to learn from. So the lunar eclipse talks about shedding our old skin. It talks about letting go of whatever, you know, what we do and what does not serve us. And the new moon talks about beginnings. It talks about you know, relationships. It talks about you know, the relationship with you, with your own divinity. It talks about how do you, you know, start uh, completely afresh. So if it's happening at the same time, you know, it's sometimes one wonders that do you shed the old or do you start the new? Do you start new projects or do you uh, look at what is not serving you? What do you really do? And for each person, that experience again would be different. Uh, what that also means is that, uh, let me take an example. Recently, a couple of weeks back, I, uh, I was ill and um, there was no reason for me to uh, be ill. And I, uh, of course, then I did remember why I uh, fell ill. I had fever and cold. I, apart from that, I was absolutely okay. And that entire process also seemed a little different because uh, in hindsight, I did realize that it is 
it was actually a transition time, a transition period for me. And suddenly by the fourth, uh, and uh, usually our, the way that we work is even if you're not well, you know, we continue to work, we continue to show up. We say, no, you know, my clients are waiting or my work is waiting and I need to show up. But this time for the first time, I actually said, no, I, I need this time for myself. I need to take a step back. And I actually did change. Um, I changed the next couple, three days appointments, whatever I could shift, I shifted, I postponed that. And those three days were the best gift that I could give to my own trans, you know, transition and the best gift that I could give into my so-called ascension time. Because most of the time I was resting or I was meditating or I was in a trance state. And what that helped me do is really help me understand and sudden, you know, um, go deeper and understand what the patterns were, what what more belief systems were. Do I did I need to shed? And this has happened multiple times. It's like you know, you will go through a transition or you will go through something. It'll you'll drop a couple of things like that. You will suddenly feel. I'm a different person and not everybody around you might notice that but you know that you're no longer the person you were three days before and I want you to pay attention to this and if you have been and the reason I felt it and I could do it is because I listened I listened to what my body needed I listened to what need I needed to do to make it happen which was to rest to rejuvenate and reconnect and if you haven't been doing that, if you are resisting it and you say, no, I need to take care of the kids, I need to take care of the house, I need to take care of my uh, parents, I need to take care of my partner, my husband, my family, you are stopping in your way. You are stopping yourself from moving into that transition and it will not serve you. It will come back in a bigger way because it is there for a reason. So this time today, what we are going to do is, I am going to do a very powerful prayer. And some of you, whoever uh, of you who are listening now doing the meditation along with me, or who do it later, just feel through the process and take it through the way that you're feeling. Do not resist anything. Do not resist if people's name comes, who you need to drop, the relationship that you need to drop, need to change, the friendships that you might need to drop. It is all part of what you need to do. And if we do that, it will be easier on our health. It will be easier for us, for our mental ability, for our mental peace as well. You will see that suddenly things will start move, moving in the direction that you want, that you had probably been praying for, or you had been uh, in a doing uh, processes for, um, and it will be much easier the moment you surrender to your own journey. Okay, and uh, let me just quickly check if there are any comments. I hate when Facebook filters it into most relevant and something. Hi, Sonali. Hi, Rashmi. Uh, okay. So I don't see some new comments. And what is also happening uh, is we have, of course, we have Mars in retrograde and Mars retrograde will uh, it will move back into its normal direction on November 13th and Mercury retrograde is till um, November 3rd. So uh, Mercury will also be moving back into, uh, in, into its normal orbit by um, November 3rd, right? And uh, so, and usually some people might feel the uh, rush of that, the intensity of the retrograde when it's is coming in or it's going out. So just be careful over the next two, three days. Today's 31st, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd November. Just be careful. Just again, reread 
uh, re, uh, any messages that you're sending, any emails that you're sending, any documents that you're signing, if you can postpone the document signing till after uh, third, even third evening is okay, or fourth, if that is possible for you. And just make sure that you aren't checking, double checking anything that you're seeing. Be mindful of the words. And this year, again, communication has be, been a major, major key because this year is also whether it is public, uh, you know, um, uh, public figures or people in their families across the board, we have, we have to be very mindful of the words that we choose and the intention with which we are saying them. So this, uh, again, this is a very, very important time when both the planets Mercury and Mars are going back into their normal uh, positions over the next uh, 10, 13 days. Okay. And um, what you want, the other thing that you might feel in terms of energy is as Mars goes back into its normal orbit, because it was an Aries, it um, it'll intensify uh, with, and not just with you, with people around you, it'll intensify the passion, the power, desire to get things done, desire to really speed up things, desire to, you know, say, okay, enough, you know, enough waiting, I need to move that, move it out, or I need to start pushing this project ahead, or I need to start moving in, you know, uh, change, moving in the, um, the, in terms of the change that I need to bring about. So, which is okay, um, but remember that speed is not always, uh, does not always work with everyone. So be, again, be mindful and be careful. Uh, if there is a reason to speed up, like for example, your ascension, yes, definitely do whatever it takes. If your intuition is telling you that you need to do certain things, please start doing them we are all being called to be more and more congruent. If we are not congruent with what our, uh, you know, what our soul needs and what has been uh, being told to us, we will keep facing this clash. And these are everything across the mind, body, soul, everything, whether it is, it is our physical uh, needs, whether it is our physical health, it is our mental health, it is our mental stability, our mental stimulus, whether it is our emotional health, emotional stability, emotional stimulus, everything needs to be congruent. And along with that, the words that we speak, the action that we take, all of it has to be congruent. We can no longer say something and say, and say you know, that we are going to wait, I'm going to wait for the right time, and then that's when I'm going to move ahead. Or yes, I want to do this, yes, I want to do this, but you're not doing it. <coughs> Remember that the more congruent you will be, and for that, just look back on my meditation on the 20, which was on the 25th, I talk about the congruence even more in that um, meditation, okay. Any questions uh, that you have, just put them here, um, because I'm just going to start with the meditation now, but if there are any questions, just put that here and I'll try and answer them before we get into meditation. And as the comments uh, come up with the time lag, um, equanimity, yes, Bano. You will, there will be a desire to be part of it, a desire to lead it also amongst the society that you stay in, amongst your office environment, amongst the work that you do, whether you are an entrepreneur or you work for somebody else or you work for corporates. And um, one of the things that um, uh, when I was working through the uh, schedule for over the next couple of months. Uh, one of the reasons why I have a lot of programs that are going to be coming up in November and December is because um, I could no longer hold them back. Uh, you know, I had to work on it. So we have uh, the Breathwork series has been going on. There was a package of three series and that is going to move into a um, 
larger um, the level two. So breathwork level two series is going to be where we I will be having sessions twice a week uh, and at least eight sessions in all. If you want to be part of the breathwork series level two, let me know. And there is also a way that you can access level one. Uh, but you do not need it is you don't need to be part of one or two but one or the other but if you do want to understand how breath work can help you uh, not just in terms of your emotional and mental health but also how to speeden up some of the ascension related things um, you can be part of that i will also be talking about mudras this time in level two and how we can use some of that, okay? And of course, we have the Divine Feminine, which is coming up. The Divine Feminine Level 2 is a beautiful program that I have been, uh, that has literally, literally been hammered into me to put it out there to everyone. It is the intensive part of the Divine Feminine, and it is a beautiful um, experience that each, each person who is going to be a part of it will really be able to see not just a connection with themselves but relationships so the level two is going more intense and more deeper than level one uh, and it will go deeper with the relationship with yourself as well as your partner specifically because it is also connected to the conscious masculine program that I will be having in December and if you want to be part of the divine feminine and co conscious masculine you there is a spe special combo package that is also that is also offer where you can bring a friend so in, that is available also to you so breath work is one the divine feminine is another one that we are i'm i'll be doing and uh, in november and we i also have tarot level one and level two that will be happening in november now i want to spend time on tarot because a lot of us look at tarot as a means of divination the way that I will be teaching level one will, yes, be a lot about divination and how you can do your own readings. But level two will be a dive into the spiritual science of tarot, because that's how I look at tarot. That's how I have found the most benefit of the tarot cards. If you want to be part of that, you can reach out to me. I will be putting up the calendar here uh, pretty soon, but just DM me or just put it in the comments and I'll reach out to you, right? And um, so if you're ready with your uh, paper and your uh, writing <coughs> and your uh, writing pen and you have some water next to you, uh, let's get started, okay? <coughs> Just going to check the comments once again. Okay, and uh, those of you who have been meditating with me know, uh, know the drill by now. So wherever you are, just find a comfortable place where you will not be disturbed for the next half an hour or so. And let's just get back, release all the tension from our shoulders. I want you to just move your shoulders a little bit there's a lot of tension nowadays especially the last few days that many of us have been storing in our shoulders so just rotate them in circular motion one side uh, five six times and then the other side five six times again it should just come naturally nothing should feel like a lock or a little abrupt just a natural flow in a circular direction Okay. And just move your neck a little bit, relaxing your neck. 
from side to side. Back and front. And <coughs> just taking a deep breath in now, all the way to your belly. And releasing through the mouth with an audible sigh. When we release our breath through the mouth, it's signaling to our body that it is safe to relax. So let's take another deep breath in through the nose and letting it go through the mouth with an audible sigh. And I invite you to now close down your eyes if you haven't <coughs> done that already. I invite you now to close down your eyes. And as you do that, Just bringing all the focus to your breath. Keeping your eyes closed and centering yourself. If you're seated on the bed or if you're on the floor, just visualize that the base of your spine is going, goes down, down, down energetically, the base of your spine takes you down grounded and connects to the center of the earth. And if you're seated on a chair and your feet are firmly on the floor, just feel grounded through your feet as if your feet are growing roots and are at ease and grounded in the earth. Let's take one deep breath in to complete that process of being grounded in Mother Earth. Take a deep breath all the way to your belly. Hold at the top. And let it go with an audible sigh. And centering yourself, keeping your eyes closed just feel into that connection with Mother Earth. Feel into your own connection with Mother Earth. How does that feel? As we go deeper and connect to the elements around us, I want you to stay connected with your breath and know that today is a very special day. The blue moon in October shines to its fullest, fullest ability. Helping you through your own transcendent, transcendence and transition to a new you. Continuing to keep all your focus on your breath and all your centeredness on your breath. Keeping your eyes closed. We go on this journey to discover parts of yourself that need to be reunited, that need to be seen and heard as you embark on the rest of the journey of this year. I invite you to now 
place two fingers on the center of your chest and feel that connection with your heart space. And feel how you breathe in and breathe out through your heart center. This is where you need to connect to today. Keeping your eyes closed. I invite you to this journey inward. Visualize that you're walking into huge park it is dusk or just about night time and the full moon is in all its glory as you walk into that park you know that it is a special park. You can feel it in your bones and you can feel it in the air. This journey of today is really going to be special because it is something that you have been waiting, waiting for and waiting to know what you need to do as you walk further, taking each step, one and two and three, walking into the garden. Perhaps the, the gate was open or it didn't have a gate, but you are free to walk into that garden. As you do so, you feel tempted to remove your footwear, your shoes or your sandals or your slippers and just feel the coolness of the grass below. And as you do that, the grass tickles you beneath your feet. You continue to walk to this patch of thick grass. This patch of thick grass is where, is from where you can see the moon clearly. There is a bench next to that space, that patch of thick green grass as you walk further and further towards that bench you are loving the feeling of the green grass below your feet and as you take a step further and further you arrive at the bench it's a plain bench a stone bench, flat. You just take a moment to sit there because the view of the full moon is so perfect. As you sit there and watch the full moon, it almost feels as if it is blue. But you do know that it's just the full moon playing its old tricks. As you visualize and see the full moon with your clear sight, you feel the breeze on your legs, your feet and your hands and perhaps your fingers too, the gentle cool breeze is just so right 
and you can almost smell the most subtlest fragrance of the flowers. It all seems so perfect, a perfect time and space for you to let go. As you take your time, you feel perhaps you would really like to lie down on Mother Earth in that thick patch of green grass that feels so soft and amazing. As you go down and lie on your back, you can see the full moon right in front of your eyes, no effort required at all. And as you look out at the moon, conversing with the full moon, images or thoughts and memories of the past couple of days or perhaps new ones, they just come to you. And you wonder where those memories or thoughts are coming from. But it doesn't really bother you because it just feels you are having a private one on one with the moon. This private one on one just feels so special. It's as if the full moon in all of its glory is telling you a story. It has come to you. It is in fact, the full moon has called out to you. And that's the reason why you are here today in that park lying on Mother Earth, touching Mother Earth, communing with Mother Earth and conversing with the moon. With your closed eyes now, just let each of the thoughts come to you naturally. And just take a few moments of silence to notice what they are. And perhaps you might need to slow them down. Slowing each of those thoughts down, the movie that has been running in your mind, just slowing it down. And just observe what is happening for the next few moments of silence. As it slows down, I want you to notice the 
what is the moon really saying to you? This year, the year of 2020, what is the full moon of October telling you about your purpose for this year? What is it that you have still hesitated to do? What are you still afraid to do? What are you still afraid of in your own power? What makes you uneasy in relationships? What are you uncomfortable un with in some relationships and you haven't told them that, you haven't pushed back? Notice, has it happened with many people? Notice where is their lack of congruency? Where is it that you are asking for a relationship or perhaps you are praying for changes in your existing one? Or perhaps you're wanting to transform something in your own life or transform the perfect relationship that you wish to attract. What is the missing link? And you will know this intuitively, whatever is the missing link. Only you know. And as you observe that, let the tears flow. Let the emotions flow. Let go. Let go. And once you do that, I want you to now observe what belief kept you from making this change. Perhaps there was a self-belief or perhaps there is a pattern in the family that has been running for many generations. Or did you, or were you stopping your own self? Was it a fear? What was or what is that fear? Do you self-sabotage your own relationships? And what is hiding behind that? What fear is really hiding behind that self-sabotaging behavior? This is the time to let go. Just let go of that. We do not need to protect ourselves. We do not need the ego. To stop us, to tell us 
what is not needed. The soul knows, the soul always will tell us what we need to do. And as you observe this, I want you to promise to yourself that from this moment onwards, you make the changes, the soul makes the changes. The soul is unafraid. The soul is ever willing and yet unafraid of change, unafraid to run into that fire of a relationship, into that passion of a relationship because the soul does not get hurt. The ego gets hurt. The soul only learns. There is nothing to get hurt. Because you as a soul are always ready to change the direction of your relationship, to accept a new loving relationship. To make changes in your family, in your friendships, the soul just, just flows. And the changes don't look like changes. It just happens. Take a few moments to integrate this new information, integrating your soul's purpose and your soul's courage with what you desire as a human being. Take a few moments of silence as you do this. And whatever emotions come, just let the emotions flow. And as you do this, I want you to now Take a deep breath in through your nose, all the way to your belly, filling up your lungs and your belly to the maximum and letting it go through your mouth with an audible sigh. And as you do this, the integration is complete in an instant. I want you to embrace yourself now Give yourself a warm embrace as if hugging yourself with your arms. Savor this moment. As you do this, you slowly 
come back to the feeling of being with the Mother Earth on the beautiful thick patch of grass and being with the full moon in that park. As you do that, I want you to slowly just getting up from the grass <coughs> and as you stand up slowly it is time to come back it is time to feel the other elements of nature and as you put on your shoes, your footwear once again. <coughs> you know it's time to let go. But you will always remember this moment because you have just permanently changed something. as you start to move towards the entry of the cave park where you came in from you notice a small pond or a stream of water that you hadn't noticed before and it's just enough for you to dip your feet into it as you move towards it, I want you to just take a moment, dipping your feet dipping your feet in that stream in that puddle of water. It is neither too cold, it is just right. And as you splash the water, you enjoy being in the bottle. And as you move towards back to the beginning of the garden, start moving towards the, that place. Taking each step and coming back one step at a time to the entrance of the garden. At the entrance of the garden, you notice that somebody has put some candles and some lamps, some diyas there, and there's a matchbox. And you can light that candle or that diya. completing the communing with all the five with the five elements and holding the dia or the candle in the palm of your hand you start walking toward where you came from as you start walking, moving towards it, you start coming back slowly. 
you realize that that candle or that they are so magical that it can merge into your body without hurting or burning you. Because that the and the candle really signifies that flame in your heart, that passion of the soul in your heart. And as you start walking back and taking your own time, the flame begins to merge into the center of your chest on its own, magically, with no, no real hurt and nothing to feel. It just feels as if it was really there to remind you and as you slowly come back, you realize the beautiful commune that you just had with the moon and the ether and the air and your breath and mother earth and the water and the flowers and the fragrance and the flame and the passion of your soul, remembering who you truly are and shedding off all that has been unnecessary. You are born anew. And this is a new beginning. Slowly centering your breath once again. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let go of it very, very slowly through the mouth, very, very slowly. And as you do that, you begin to feel the sensation back in your body. Gently bring some movement to your feet and your hands. And begin to be in in touch with the place that you are, the seat where you might be, or the bed that you might be on. And gently, whenever you're ready, just blink, open your eyes. And you can just rub your palms together and put them on your eyes, on your face, your cheeks, top of your head. Once again, just stabilizing all the energy. You've done such good work, just stabilizing the energy, just moving your hands and your legs a little bit, just stabilizing all the energy. Take a sip of water and come back completely. Let me know how your experience was. How did you feel? Just keep sipping the water a little bit. 